to it. Wonderful. Thank you, Simon. Uh, and thank you for everyone who is uh, taking the time to be with us right now, as well as uh, for those that will be joining us via recorded session here later. Um, since uh, our group is a little more intimate, uh, we'll go ahead and open it up for a Q&A throughout the presentation. So if anyone on the call has a, uh, any questions as we review the content, please don't hesitate to uh, interrupt us and, and get your question out there so we can get it answered. Um, if we have uh, enough join where it maybe gets a little bit uh, cumbersome, we'll stop that uh, and hold the Q&A until the end. But uh, for those maybe who are listening uh, via recorded session, obviously, please reach out to the GO team. Um, or you're obviously welcome to email uh, international at trueaudio.com and we can make sure your questions get answered and loop you into um, the GO team as well. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to start out with some introductions, both to our international team as well as our company. And then we'll go ahead and jump into Vessel and True Audio, the Vessel and True Audio products. So uh, we'll start by introducing the, uh, our international sales team. First on the call with us today is Dallin Kaufman. He's our Director of International Sales and Business Development. He has been with us for a couple of years now. Uh, he actually uh, comes from Ubiquity, if you're familiar with that brand. Uh, he managed pretty much the entire European marketplace for Ubiquity, and we are, uh, we're happy that he, he uh, joined us uh, just a little while back. And he continues to manage international business for us and the sound vision uh, portfolio brands. Uh, also uh, with Dallin, we have Yvette Kelsey, uh, who works uh, on the international markets as well. Unfortunately, she was not able to join us today, but uh, in case you see that name pop up, you'll know that she is a member of our team. And then finally, Crystal Kemp, she is our international sales support specialist. She makes sure we get uh, inventory where it needs to be and accounting and, and invoicing is all done uh, in proper, proper form. So uh, we have an absolutely phenomenal sales team here to support uh, you and your efforts as you work with your you, your end users. So um, a little bit about sound vision technologies as you partner with the uh, Go Wi-Fi, the Go Wireless team, uh, you are partnering with uh, or have access to the entire portfolio of products that sound vision technologies has to offer. Uh, some of these brands that you'll see on the screen here are, are hopefully uh, uh, familiar to you or common to you and then others maybe perhaps are new. Uh, we have True Audio Vessel, Current Audio, Unified Copper Forge and Padmount. Uh, these are all brands that Sound Vision Technologies has not only founded, uh, but continues to manufacture and develop for to this day, uh, with one exception. Kern Audio was an actual acquisition uh, just over two years ago, and we brought that in to uh, plug some holes in the True Audio lineup and have access to some, some pretty unique patents and tooling and, and some markets that uh, True Audio has not serviced uh, in the past. So uh, for today's uh, presentation, we're going to focus uh, entirely on Vessel and True Audio. I'd help you get a little bit more familiar with not only those brands, but some of the top products in the uh, in those particular uh, brands so that uh, as you turn around and go and talk to your customers, you're a little bit more comfortable in presenting why our products are so great and why the, they should purchase them. So uh, a little bit more uh, about our uh, about our organization. Uh, Sound Vision Technologies is, is actually a company that has existed since 1999. Uh, some of you are probably much more familiar with the brand True Audio. Uh, True Audio was actually a, a DBA 20 years ago that we came to market with and started to really kind of push and promote to help develop the brand True Audio. Uh, Sound Vision's always just kind of been behind the scenes, but because of our various brands and, and some questions about, you know, where the brands have come from and what holds us all together uh, in the last year and a half, we've really decided to promote Sound Vision. Uh, along with our brand, so everyone knows kind of where we came from and, and where we're going. Uh, but uh, 21, 22 years ago when we were founded, uh, we were founded very much uh, by, or excuse me, by individuals very much like yourselves, uh, system integrators that, uh, you know, were tired of dealing, but, uh, dealing with big manufacturers that really didn't have their best uh, interest at heart, uh, maybe were difficult to work with or difficult to uh, be supported by. So, uh, our original founders uh, saw an opportunity to come and do it better and come to market with products that not only sounded familiar or sounded fantastic, but were uh, well-priced, well-built, uh, and well-protected from a margin perspective. Uh, we obviously, coming from system integration, know what it's like to have margin in our business and want to make sure that, that is maintained so that you can have uh, the dollars necessary to uh, obviously pay your team, uh, roll your trucks, cover your overhead, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we always have been privately held, and we're held by the same founders that uh, founded us about uh, 20, 21 years ago. Uh, we are based in a small little town in southern Utah called Hurricane, Utah. 
the only reason for that is uh, our original founders kind of got tired of living in snow and decided to move us four hours south of Salt Lake City, which is where we were originally founded. Uh, if you're not familiar with Southern Utah, if you fly into Las Vegas and drive about an hour and a half due east, you'll run right into our building. Uh, we, uh, we'd love to, uh, if you happen to be in Las Vegas, uh, anywhere in the near future, please reach out to us. We'd love to invite you up and uh, give you a, a tour of the facilities and our manufacturing facilities and um, just kind of show you around Southern Utah. But um, just because we're based in a, a smaller town in Southern Utah, we are actually Southern Utah's largest uh, customer for UPS. Uh, we ship and distribute our products on a global scale. As you can see here on this map, we have a secondary warehouse in the United States uh, that's based in Atlanta, Georgia. And then we have uh, our Rotterdam warehouse there in the Netherlands. This basically allows us to support all of our Western Europe and, and African customers. And then our, um, you know, APAC customers, uh, similar to where you guys are, we service the, uh, we are working to service you guys out of our Shenzhen warehouse. It's actually a new warehouse for us uh, in just the last probably six months, eight months. And so that's coming online now and we uh, will begin to stock that here hopefully later this year so that we can uh, get products to you guys faster and uh, more economically. A little bit more about sound vision technologies, uh, some, perhaps some selling points of things that uh, you, can, you can walk away with at a very high level. Uh, number one, uh, we, once again, we're founded by system integrators. So we know what it's like to be in the trenches. We know what it's like to work interface with customers and have products that uh, need good support. Uh, we obviously, uh, both of our sales team and our product development and tech support team, we're here to support you. Uh, so any, anytime you have new product ideas, we'd love to take those and, and, and bring those to market. Uh, a lot of our products that are in our portfolio today are based on feedback that comes uh, exactly from you. Uh, we have some very unique product traits that uh, some of which we'll touch on today that are very unique to our uh, both Vessel and True Audio products that make installation easier, faster, uh, that uh, often are go unthought of from other large organizations because they just have never had any experience on, on the front lines. And uh, we also balance a, a great value proposition. We, we have a, a, a wide portfolio of products in both brands, and that allows you to essentially come to any project uh, with any price point and any solution. And in those solutions, you're getting, uh, uh, once again, very solid price points, great sound, and a well-built uh, either amplifier or speaker. Essentially, that uh, hopefully makes you feel a little more comfortable in taking our products and recommending them to your customers. Kind of give you a little bit of an idea on how well our products are built. I wanted to give you guys an idea of what our warranty situation looks like. First and foremost, if it carries the True Audio brand uh, and it is a speaker, uh, something that does not have any electronics built into it, and it's designed to be installed inside of a building, so a residence or a commercial space, uh, generally, the True Audio brand there carries a limited lifetime warranty. Uh, essentially, uh, we are willing to stand behind that product for the length of time. Uh, as long as it, uh, if it fails, which is on the off chance that it does, um, our product failures are very rare. Uh, we will uh, replace it uh, um, essentially our cost. So we work with the, the Go team and get that down to, down to you guys. Um, in the event that obviously it was uh, misinstalled or potentially some sort of other issue, obviously the warranty is not uh, does not cover that. But we co we cover all that on our website and all of our packaging. So um, we err on the side of taking care of you as well as the customer. We want you guys to be happy with our products, not worried about whether or not your manufacturing partner, Sound Vision Technologies, will be standing behind its products. So um, also in, in that limited lifetime category, we have our four tracks, which. Uh, is the equipment racking one, but again, we're not talking about that very much today. Uh, as far as anything that carries the True Audio brand that has electronics built into it, so think amplifiers uh, that carry the True Audio brand, also subwoofers that have a, a, an amplifier built in, uh, or any of the True Audio branded speakers that are designated as outdoor and are designed to be installed outdoor, uh, those carry a limited five-year warranty. Uh, moving on to Vessel, uh, it, it, quite a bit more technologies built into that. Uh, and just to kind of keep in line with what the expectation is with an amplifier with similar technology, uh, that carries a limited one-year warranty. And uh, But again, whether it's true audio or Vessel, inside of the house products, outside of the house products, commercial products, you name it, uh, we have very, very low product failures. Um, we can share some percentages with you guys uh, after the call to kind of give you an idea of how low those truly are. 
but uh, again, we know what it's like to uh, need dependable products and, and uh, we, we absolutely manufacture that and, and in our entire kind of product development strategy maintains that reliable product strategy. And then as I mentioned, obviously we have some very uh, strong uh, margin protection methodologies built into all of our go-to-market strategies and marketing. Uh, we work very closely with the uh, Go Wireless team to make sure that those are honored and uh, you can obviously rest easy that you're not going to have somebody undercutting you um, via, for, exa for example, uh, unauthorized online sales. So um, that's pretty much SoundVision Technologies in a nutshell. Uh, just as a general reminder, feel free to interrupt me if you guys have any questions about not only SoundVision Technologies now, but as we continue into uh, the products here momentarily. Also, you, you're welcome to hold your questions at the end if you'd like, or after the fact, you can uh, submit them to us in an email, or also the chat is enabled. You're welcome to submit those via chat, and uh, our team would be happy to um, answer those questions as we go. So we're going to jump into the Vessel product portfolio now, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of how we'll run through this. We've got, um, we'll introduce the Vessel products to you. I've got a, a competitive analysis that we can share and put on the screen here for a moment. Uh, we'll obviously share this presentation with you after the fact, so you can kind of thumb through it and spend a little more time on the more detailed slides. Uh, we also um, will have a little sneak peek of a new ser uh, new products that are coming out in the Vessel line, and then we will spend the remainder of the time in the True Audio product portfolio. We may not get all the way through True Audio. Uh, we will make sure we end right about the hour mark, but um, again, that's all kind of built into the presentation, so you're welcome to review that after the fact. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into Vessel. Uh, very excited about the Vessel product line, uh, and from the moment we founded this product set, geez, I think it's probably been almost six years ago, uh, we have been absolutely thrilled with its success and its adoption really on a global scale. Um, to kind of give you an idea of a little bit of background behind Vessel, you know, having been a system integrator, a company that, that services system integrators every single day, uh, about seven or eight years ago now, we've kind of looked back and thought, geez, wouldn't it be nice if we could simplify the music experience for the end user? We kind of took a look around at what was in the marketplace, and we had Sonos uh, that required you to go inside of their music app and bring you know, log in with whatever music service you had, uh, or you had Control4 or Crestron or Savant, and all of them were kind of giving this similar experience to the end user where you had to have their app, you had to bring their music, your music service into that app, and they were giving you very limited functionality. Essentially, you could, uh, in the, again, depending on the integration, you could pick your song, uh, you could play it, you could pause it, you could advance the track, back it up, and adjust volume, and that's pretty much it. In a lot of scenarios, you couldn't even pick your a song, you'd have to pick a predetermined playlist that you created, essentially limiting uh, your end user's experience with uh, kind of their music ecosystem. So we thought, well, geez, if we could come to market with a product set that allowed you to remain in the music app that you know and love, and no matter the music app, you could then take that and push your music into whatever zone or room in your business or in your residence, how elegant would that be and how exciting would that be for end users to no longer have to worry about learning yet another app. Uh, and I'm happy to announce that, that, geez, seven years ago now, we accomplished that in launching the Vessel product series, product set. Uh, we did so by launching the A6 first, and about a year later, the A3, and a year after that, the A1. Fortunately, all three units that you see in front of you, starting at the very top, little black box there, it's a single zone, it's called our A1. The one below that's the A3, and the one below that's the A6. But essentially, uh, how we accomplished that is we partnered with some of the major streaming uh, companies on the marketplace uh, even seven years ago and started building that technology right into uh, the vessel uh, the vessel chassis. So uh, just to kind of give you a little background on each one of those. So Spotify Connect, if you're familiar with Spotify at all, that's their native streaming protocol. That uh, technology is built right into each zone in vessel. Uh, essentially, that allows you to, inside of Spotify, pull up a group of zones or a list of zones and you can take your music and send it to any one of their named zones, which I have a video here that I'll show you momentarily to keep, demonstrate that a little better. Uh, AirPlay, that's Apple streaming technology. So, um, and, and it's no longer AirPlay, it's actually AirPlay 2. They've uh, released some great product uh, updates, which we'll talk about here in just a second. And then Chromecast built in, also known as Google Cast. That is the big, uh, you know, 500 pound gorilla in online um, uh, search engine and, and geez, they, they do so much more than that, even marketing um, and, and uh, home automation, commercial automation. So 
Uh, we're excited to be partnered with all three of these, and we have some exciting news here in about 90 days. Uh, you will have inside of the Vessel ecosystem, the Amazon Alexa music ecosystem, which I'll talk about that here in just a moment. But essentially what in, in partnering with these three companies in every single vessel zone you have in your project, you're able to leverage one of these and, and have music streamed directly into the name zone without ever leaving your music app that you know and love. So whether it's Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, Tidal, Deezer, iHeartRadio, SiriusXM Satellite Radio, or anything that has a, a tie-in to any of these three streaming architectures, even YouTube Music. Um, or thanks, if you're familiar with iOS, you can actually do the, uh, the, the swipe down from the top of the screen. I believe Chromecast or Android users are the same way. And whatever's playing on the screen of the phone, you can send the audio to a named vessel zone or group of zones. So um, to kind of give you an idea of, of how this looks from a user experience or UX experience, I'm gonna play this video. I apologize, it may be a little choppy, um, but it's basic enough that it kind of drives home the point. Uh, this is embedded in this presentation. So when we distribute it out, you'll be able to uh, go ahead and um, play this and kind of get a better understanding of what, what it's like. So here we're actually starting out with uh, AirPlay. This is more specifically AirPlay 2. Uh, we are using Apple Music to show this off. So um, know that you don't have to use Apple Music with AirPlay. You can use basically anything on an iOS device and AirPlay should work. You can see here, we're gonna go ahead and uh, pick our track and our song or from our artist. Uh, the track's called Rolex by Io and Tio. Uh, we're starting to play that. You'll see we'll pull up the song menu here and down here at the bottom clicking on the AirPlay menu. And you'll see that we're immediately presented with a list of zones that are on the, the network that this particular iPhone is connected to. And if you're not familiar with AirPlay 2, AirPlay 2 essentially allows you to select multiple zones, not just one. So you can group a, a list, a group of zones together and have them all play the same thing at the same time. That's what you're gonna see here next. Next, we're going to use Pandora to show off Google Cast, but as you know, uh, you don't need to use Pandora with Google Cast. Basically, um, whether you're on an iPhone or an Android, Google Cast should be available in pretty much any music app. So here we're going to show you Spotify Connect. We've gone to the Spotify app. Spotify Connect is only available in Spotify. However, inside of the Spotify app, you can not only use Spotify Connect streaming technology, but you can also use Google Cast, also known as Chromecast built-in, as well as AirPlay 2. Okay, hopefully that was smooth on your side. And again, if not, we'll obviously be sharing this with you uh, and you can kind of go through that uh, on your own time. Essentially though, hopefully that drives home the point that is really truly that easy to now play music inside of your business or your residence from any music app that you know and love. You'll notice that we never touched the Vessel app in this particular video. Uh, we, and the reality is you don't need to. Uh, there is a Vessel app that you can use for setup, which we will not really be covering in this presentation. Uh, we have a more advanced uh, training on the Vessel app that you can grab on YouTube or we can set that up later. But essentially the Vessel app's there for uh, some initial setup and some other features that uh, you're welcome to introduce to your customers. But at the end of the day, they don't need to live in the Vessel app for any reason at all. Once you've set it up for them, you're welcome to, uh, they, at that point, they can just live inside of the music app that they know and love and they can um, have the, uh, one of the easiest, most smooth user experiences available in the market. Uh, just a quick uh, touch on AirPlay 2. Just want to make sure everyone's comfortable understanding what's so great about AirPlay 2. If you're familiar with AirPlay 1, Gen 1 of AirPlay, uh, you'll know that it had some bugs in regards to stability. Uh, and also, if you're using AirPlay to stream your music or your video to any AirPlay 1 enabled endpoint, any sort of phone call or text message would interrupt that audio stream. 
there's also some other things uh, that AirPlay 1 was known for that essentially AirPlay 2 has gotten rid of. Uh, and to be honest with you, I was not an AirPlay 1 fan. I, I tried to stay away from it. Now AirPlay 2 is really almost all I use because of how great it is from a stability standpoint and it allows users to uh, group multiple AirPlay 2 enabled endpoints together at the same time. So kind of what we talked about in that video and what you can see on the screen is you can now group multiple AirPlay 2 zones across even multiple vessel chassis. So if you have an A3, an A6, and an A1 in the same uh, in the same group or, or in the same network, the same project, or maybe it's an A1 and A3 or an A1 and A6 or three A6s, um, this AirPlay 2 technology has the ability to span across multiple chassis and play the same thing in multiple zones. Uh, the other thing, because we out of the box are uh, certified, ready to go with Google, the Google, or excuse me, with Google, with our Chromecast built in, also known as Google Cast, as well as with our uh, integration with Apple and certification with Apple, uh, out of the box, we work with both the Google Assistant as well as Siri. And it's a very tight, very clean and elegant integration in that uh, you don't have to use very long strings of voice commands that you have to try and remember. You can keep it very natural. Essentially, you can say, okay, Google Play Music, or okay, Google Play Hotel California by the Eagles. And in your setup, if you've set that Google up uh, to be in your kitchen or your bedroom or your office, your conference room, uh, it'll automatically play on that zone that you've set it to play to by default. And you can also, if, for example, if in your kitchen and you want to play music outside, you can say, okay, Google, speaking to the Google Assistant in your kitchen, play music outside and it will turn music on outside in your patio or next to your pool or whatever you may have it. Uh, the same applies with Siri, very elegant, very clean integration. And unfortunately, this slide is a little out of date. Obviously, we are in Q2 and we will be uh, launching um, the Amazon Alexa uh, integration um, here uh, very shortly. We'll be getting inventory down uh, to New Zealand, hopefully in about the next 90 days. So I apologize that slide is a little out of date. Um, just a quick reminder, don't hesitate to pop any questions up. If you have them, feel free to unmute yourself and interrupt me at any time. Just a quick uh, thing from our side, uh, Simon from Go Wireless. We have a Nest Mini here and Liam and I set up a Nest Mini with an A1 home. And yeah, pretty straightforward. Very, very cool that you could um, just pass the Nest to play Rolling Stones. Yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. Set it all up. Thanks for the input, you two. Um, okay, now we're going to jump into the actual vessel products. We're going to give you a little bit of an introduction to each one of these and what makes them so great. And then we'll jump into the True Audio product portfolio. Uh, first, we're going to start with the A1. I like to refer to this as uh, kind of our Swiss Army knife of uh, amplifiers and media streaming solutions because it literally has something for every project out there. Um, I actually often encourage a lot of integrators to make sure they have three or four of these on the truck because they are great at getting you out of a bind. Meaning if a customer comes to you and says, oh, you know what? I forgot to add audio into this one zone. Can you add it? Or, hey, do you, is there any chance that you do audio? Uh, I need to be able to add music into the into my, my project. Or maybe uh, you've already done some, run some speaker wire and um, you know maybe uh, the drywall guy or the jit board guy accidentally cut your speaker wire and you can't get it back to your network closet and you need to uh, you know now make a, an isolated vessel zone and you have to keep your A1 kind of in a, in an island in your master bedroom, for example, or your kitchen, whatever you have. Uh, with everything we built into the A1, we give you the capabilities to essentially, again, have a solution for any project. Uh, and I'll kind of walk you through exactly what we've built into it. Uh, first and foremost, the A1 uh, home actually has a built-in amplifier. Uh, unlike its competitor, the Sonos port, uh, it, uh, which does not have an amplifier built in, uh, or Sonos Amp, which does have an amplifier built in, but it is uh, about, uh, I think, 30% more, 20% more uh, from a retail perspective. Uh, the A1 comes uh, prepared with the ability to hook up to any pair of speakers uh, and can uh, send uh, 35 watts, a strong 35 watts, to uh, pretty much any speaker that you hook up to it. Uh, there's a lot of overhead built into the power supply, so you're able to drive some, some pretty large speakers very effectively, very efficiently. Um, you can actually disable the amplifier and use it as just a source only device so you can see we give you a number of logical inputs and outputs uh, we have analog out and analog in essentially you can use your traditional rca uh, cables to loop out of this into a larger amplifier 
big 70 volt, 100 volt amplifier in the event you're doing a larger commercial project and you're daisy chaining speakers, or perhaps you're doing a surround sound system and you need some sort of ability to stream music into that surround sound amplifier and processor, you can use that analog out. Uh, very similarly, you can use the optical out or digital coax out to loop into a larger amplifier uh, in the event that you need more than just a pair of speakers in your project. Uh, we're giving you analog in, optical in, and digital coax in in the event that you wanted to take something like a CD player or a satellite box, record player, or even a media server, and you can uh, uh, wire that into the A1 and make it available to not only the amplified out uh, ports, but you can also make that available on any of the analog out, optical out, or digital coax out. So again, um, if you're trying to give your customers some ability to switch between streaming music as well as say TV audio, that's what we've done here is you can go into the Vessel app and choose which you'd like to take priority over the other. For example, if you've got this hooked up to a TV and you want every time the TV uh, turns on, you want it to interrupt your music stream, uh, you can do that or vice versa. If you're watching TV and the second you grab your phone and you're not streaming music to your A1 in your living room, your TV room, it'll interrupt your TV audio and start playing whatever you're sending from your phone or tablet or computer. Um, also, you'll see that we're giving you network in and out, so that way you can daisy chain multiple devices in the event that you only have a single network drop into a certain closet or wherever you're hiding your A1s. Uh, obviously, we know what it's like to tie up a network port and want to give you the ability to not have to tie up a bunch for a bunch of A1s. Uh, also built into the Vessel A1 home is a uh, high quality Wi-Fi uh, MIMO chipset. So very, uh, very good signal to noise ratio there, very stable, uh, strong Wi-Fi connection. Uh, that you can use in the event that you can't hardwire the A1. Uh, we also have Bluetooth built in in the event your customer absolutely cannot live without Bluetooth. That is something you can also disable in the Vessel app in the event that you don't want something always on, always open, and always broadcasting from a Bluetooth standpoint. Uh, the A1 also has what's called a dark mode. So in the event that you wanted these lights to be off, for example, if you're in a dark room or you want it behind a TV and you didn't want to see the, the nice warm glow of the Vessel A1, you could disable that. Also in this picture, you can see that it has little pointy feet. Those are actually magnetic feet that you can uh, quickly grab and remove in the event that you wanted to put this on a 1U rack shelf. Uh, two of these actually fit side by side on a 1U rack shelf. There's also little key slots on the bottom of this. So in the event that you wanted to wall mount this um, kind of up and out of the way so it's not tying up uh, valuable shelf space, you can do that as well. Um, also, the A1, as I mentioned earlier, one of the many reasons I consider a Swiss Army knife is you can literally hook this up to any amplifier out there and, and now introduce music streaming technology right into your projects. Jumping into the A3 and the A6, a lot of the same functionality that is in the A1 is found in the A3 and the A6. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you can mix and match these to your heart's content. Uh, there's no theoretical limit to the total number of vessel zones that you can have on the project as long as your network is built appropriately and you have the available bandwidth uh, to support all of the uh, music streaming zones. Another common question we get is, um, I can see that you have a six zone and a three zone, but how many zones can I have playing at the same time? Or how many sources can be playing at the same time? The answer to that is for every vessel zone that you have on the project, you can have something playing either at the same time or differently. So if you have a six zone project and you wanted something different playing at the same time and time in all six zones, the vessel can do that. If you wanted the same thing playing in all six zones at the same time, you can do that in any variation therein. It's completely up to you. Uh, we've got a lot of competitors out there that uh, even though they support six zones, you can only have two, three, or four things playing at the same time. Uh, and that's a limitation built into their products. You, uh, you'll notice that both of these have feet as well. They're designed, they can be put on a shelf. The A3 can also be wall mounted in the event that you're using a server closet or a, a, you're using a network rack or an IT rack or an equipment rack from Forge. You can remove those feet and each of the A3 and A6 has actually come with a rack mount kit that you can then use to install these in an equipment rack. Kind of walk you through uh, the business end of both the A3 and the A6. The A3, as you can see, uh, it's got three amplifiers built in, so you can actually use what's called a Phoenix connector uh, to go in each one of those zone one, zone two, zone three. That's where you terminate your speaker wire uh, through, again, a Phoenix connector. It's a, it's a very robust, hardy screw terminal. It's no longer compression, so less chance of things, you know, accidentally getting pulled out and your customer calling you and say, hey, my, my speakers don't work, my audio's not working. On the A3, we're also giving you the same network in and out as the A1. 
Uh, also, you can see we have a bus out, which is an analog out. As you move a little bit over to the right of the zone one, zone two, zone three, it's a little uh, white and red uh, RCA connection. We're also giving you a bus in. So what the bus out does is you can essentially tie that or slave that to any of the zones. So in the event that you had, for example, a pair of speakers in a patio or an outdoor kind of living area, but then you had a larger system like our landscape system, which we'll show you here in just a moment, and you wanted to be able to drive that at the same time as your patio speakers, you could use the bus out to do that. The bus in as well as zone one, zone two, and zone three inputs are again for those CD players, record players, satellite boxes, you name it. So, and you can make any of the inputs available on any of the amplified outputs as well as the bus out. And you can also see you know, we're giving you an optical connection, a toss connection there over by the power switch. That also can be made available on any of the outputs. So think, um, you know, any sort of a satellite box that only gives you an optical uh, audio out. Jumping down to the A6, just uh, basically the same thing as the A3, just a lot more inputs and outputs. Uh, we're giving you two bus outs that you can essentially sign to any of the zone outs two bus ins as well as an, uh, an input for every zone. And these are similar to the A3, what we call matrixable, meaning you can take any of the inputs and make them available on any of the outputs. So as an example of that, in the event that you have a CD player plugged into zone one, the little uh, white and red uh, connectors there on zone one, but you wanted to make it available or play it on the amplified uh, zone six, you can do that in the Vessel app. So a lot of really cool functionality uh, built right into the Vessel uh, ecosystem. Not only are you able to stream your music from any app, music app that you know and love, you're able to tie in external sources as well, like like, like old school CD players, record players, what have you. Uh, to kind of give you an idea of the competitive uh, analysis or uh, marketplace with the Vessel A1 Home, as well as some of its competitors, we put together this competitive comparison chart for you. Uh, you can see obviously from a retail price, uh, we are uh, stronger than the Sonos Amp. Uh, the Denon Heos Link, that's a little deceiving because as you can see down below where it says built-in amplifier, it doesn't have one. It acts like the Sonos port. So we wanted to throw that in just so you could see that Denon Heos does in fact have a product like the Vessel A1 Home. Uh, they also have one that has a built-in amplifier, but its retail price I think is $699, even higher than the Sonos Amp. Uh, you'll notice the Yamaha Music Cast uh, they do have one. I think that pricing may be a little old. I think that's a little higher. Uh, but you'll notice even with a lesser price point, they have a number of features that aren't included. For example, Google Cast, it's not supported there. And they're not giving you anywhere near the number of inputs and outputs that the A1 is giving you. Another big feature that a lot of customers aren't aware of until they have a chance to get their hands on it is paging. Uh, it's that third line from the bottom. Essentially, with the Vessel app, you can actually page uh, in a single direction into one zone or all of the zones in your project, making it very nice uh, for homeowners in the event they're trying to call their children or guests in uh, from the outside for dinner or what have you, that works really well. We also see that work uh, even here in our office, we use that to page down in our warehouse in the event that you know there are phone calls or our customers coming down for will call or what have you. So um, we also have the A3 and the A6, uh, where we really start to walk away from our customers is uh, and, and win is if you look at the retail price per zone, the uh, Vessel A3 is 1860 from retail price. So that's 1860 for three zones. If you divide that by three, you can see where your retail price is. The Denon Heos Drive, that's a four zone. Uh, I believe the Yamaha Music Cast is, but you can see once you start doing the math that we are the most cost effective solution as well as the most feature rich solution uh, available in the marketplace. And the same applies with the Vessel A6. Uh, nobody really has anything that's close to the A6 other than the rust sound piece. Uh, it is slightly more expensive, but it doesn't have the same power capabilities as the A6 does, and it is limited on its voice integrations. So some absolutely phenomenal information you're welcome to use at your convenience, and we'll be updating this with our new uh, X-Series information as soon as it launches, uh, which I will use that as a great segue to give you just a little brief introduction into the X series. This is a, essentially the A1X, the A3X, and the A6X that will be coming to market in about 90 days. Essentially everything we just talked about stays the same, except there are just a few minor differences. The, the primary one being is the color of the chassis will be changing to an all black chassis. And if as important, if not most important, is we will now be incorporating Alexa into the chassis. So basically, 
Alexa Cast, the Alexa voice assistant will work with the X series and we will be the only uh, manufacturer that has the ability to support both Google, the Google Assistant Chromecast, as well as AirPlay and Spotify and Alexa in the same chassis. So you can have all of those playing at the same time uh, with any of our Vessel X series products. So in the weird scenario where you have a household or a business that wants both the Google Assistant and Alexa, you can do that. Uh, more importantly, in my opinion, one of the better selling features is that you no longer have to inventory uh, both sets of SKUs. You don't have to learn both sets of SKUs or two sets of different SKUs, and you don't have to worry about supporting two different. So at that point, you're with the Vessel A1X, they will be replacing the A1s. And with that same SKU, you're now able to service your Alexa customers, your Google customers, your Apple customers, your Spotify customers, etc. So please stay tuned for more information on the X series. We're excited to be talking about this in further detail as the launch time approaches. Uh, now we'll go ahead and jump into the True Audio products. Uh, we've parsed this presentation back quite a bit just to focus on some of our most popular and most successful SKUs that we see really on a global scale. Uh, the True Audio product portfolio is very healthy from, and it's very wide and very deep. And again, we're just focusing on kind of the top few. So in the event that you feel like you're missing something, please reach out to the Go team or the Sound Vision team. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have and help you understand where the best uh, implement our products. We also offer a free system design service, which uh, I don't believe we talked about very much in the presentation at this point, but know that in the event that you have a project that you're uh, interested in, in working with or on, and you want kind of our guidance, our team's guidance on where to install speakers, what speakers to recommend, we'd be happy to walk you through that process. Essentially through that, you'll learn that uh, audio installation is not complicated. Uh, there's just a couple of tips and tricks to watch out for and remember that point forward once you get one or two under your belt it's really easy to continue to go do and scale up and replicate inside of your business so um, i'm going to use outdoor audio to kind of kick things off and then we'll jump into a number of other categories uh, outdoor audio is probably my most favorite because over the last five to six years it's really kind of taken on a life of its own if we were to draw if we were to draw out the gr uh, growth of these particular products inside of uh, not only true audio, but really kind of on a global scale, outdoor audio has kind of got a, this hockey stick growth shape. A lot of customers are absolutely in love with outdoor audio, especially around their personal residence, whether it's a pool or an outdoor kitchen, uh, dining area, tennis court, uh, bocce ball court, horseshoe pit, whatever they have outside, music can kind of be viewed as this cherry on top of the outdoor living experience. On top of that, it's proven uh, that if audio is incorporated to an outdoor restaurant or dining area or even retail area or shopping mall, uh, customers are more apt to hang out and want to spend more money. It's a great sales pitch for your end users. So adding audio essentially could essentially drive additional revenue for them, uh, encouraging their customers to come feel welcome and enjoy their living experience when they're in their dining area or in their retail area. So the True Audio branded outdoor products can be used in both residential and commercial. We'll kind of give you a little introduction to what exactly is there. Here I'm showing you just a little bit of an application. This is a this is a residential pool in southern Utah. It's an infinity pool. We have speakers uh, kind of littered throughout the surround the pool area. And uh, those speakers you can see in the lower right hand corner are designed to look like landscape lights. They're designed to kind of blend into their um, atmosphere and they kind of help drive home that blending environment or ecosystem. We have buried subwoofers or buried grade subwoofers. That's what that little mushroom top, little T looking thing in that upper right hand corner picture. That is actually buried on this particular project. You don't, you can't see it because our photographer didn't happen to grab it in this single image, but I'm gonna get an idea there in the upper right hand corner. And that's actually an old school, uh, that's our that's our gen one buried subwoofers. You're gonna see our gen two subwoofers right now. We've actually gone to a little bit larger of a top there. And the reason why is uh, to help with serviceability in the event that there is a problem with a buried subwoofer, uh, one of the common issues that we had was uh, having to dig that subwoofer up. It was just ideal. A lot of dealers said it'd be ideal if we could figure out a way to not have to dig up that sub in the event that you know the customer accidentally blew it or the installer accidentally hooked it up wrong. So we've done that with our new Subtrain Sub Pro models here. The top actually screws off and you can get direct access to the woofer so you can swap it out really easily without having to touch a shovel after the first time. And again, these are designed to actually be buried in the ground. So those bright fluorescent colors, both yellow and green, are actually designed to be buried in the dirt so you don't see those. And all you see is kind of that upper part, the brown and vented area. 
We also have hardscape subwoofers that uh, are designed to stay above ground in the event that you can't dig a hole because of water table, maybe the ground's too hard. And then you have our landscape series speakers. These are designed to kind of work in conjunction with one another. You take your speakers and you place them um, every 15 to 20 feet apart. It ends up being every three or four meters apart. Um, actually, excuse me, every five to seven meters apart. Uh, and uh, you kind of place these on the out outward listing area and you paint point them in your primary listing area. I'll give you an example of what that looks like. But the reason we have so many different Acoustascape speakers here is it depends on your customer's project, budget, and acoustic performance requirements. So the AS1 is our smallest of the speakers. It's designed for customers that are more visually uh, picky, if you would. They, they want it to look better than they want it to sound. They want to be able to see those. They don't want to see the speakers. They want them to kind of hide down and out of the way. That's the AS1 for you. Still a great sounding speaker, but because it's so small, it uh, cannot play as loud as the next two speakers, which I'll talk to you about. Uh, the AS2 is a good middle of the road speaker, a little bit larger, so obviously a little more visually intrusive. Uh, it still has absolutely phenomenal sound and characteristics and is by far one of our most popular speakers because it's that good balance of both visual and acoustic performance. Finally, the AS3 there is uh, the canon of speakers. It is very large and uh, capable of playing very large volumes or, or loud volumes. And uh, essentially, if your customer says, you know, I, I don't necessarily care what the speakers look like. I'm okay with them being larger. I want it to absolutely rock. I want to be able to have very loud outputs. The AS3 would be a good one for you. And then finally, if you're kind of tired of looking at the old Bose uh, speakers that are designed to go outside, the little green guys that are 360 degrees, uh, we have our own version. It's true audio brand. It's quite a bit smaller than the Bose speaker. It looks quite a bit better. All of all, uh, you can see that there. It's called the AS 360. All four of these speakers can be, uh, essentially be daisy chained together, so you can use just a single run of speaker wire and place them out in your projects along with our subwoofers. Kind of give you an idea of the capability of the system. This is a very large commercial project in Texas. I wanted to just give you guys an idea of the size of projects that we can go into knowing that we can also do a very small residential project, which I'll show you another example of. But essentially, we started by doing a customer's home. Uh, he's an investor in these tribute beach clubs down in Texas. He absolutely loved what we did with his backyard. And he wanted the exact same listening experience in this very large kind of beach club. So we placed speakers and subwoofers throughout to provide a very uh, unified, very warm, very immersive listening experience throughout the entire project. Another example here, this is actually, this is the slide that kind of touts our free system design service. Kind of gives you an idea of what we're capable of both in the previous slide and this slide, not only from a size of project perspective, but also our system design team. In the event that you bring a project to us, we'd be happy to uh, do something like this for you and your, uh, your customer. Essentially, we just have a few questions that need to be answered. You know, what the budget looks like, where do we want to focus the sound, and what is the acoustic expectations and we can take that and run with it and get you a system design back in just a couple of days. Um, this is kind of the new school way of doing things as well from an outdoor audio perspective. Uh, in, in leveraging our landscape audio system, we're essentially able to provide, once again, a very immersive listening experience without interrupting your neighbors. Um, you'll see these packages here. These packages are more for convenience just to kind of help you understand what's out there. You can build these a la carte depending on your project requirements. You can start with something as simple as one speaker and one sub. And as you can see from this project, you can scale up to uh, dozens and dozens of speakers and subs. I'm going to be happy to work, walk you through that process. Uh, these, uh, you'll notice we're using Crown amp branded amplifiers here. If you're familiar with Crown, it's an absolutely fantastic amplifier. It's commercial grade. It's designed to really hold up to some of the most uh, difficult uh, environments. Uh, these are designed to then be plugged in to our Vessel A1s. It doesn't need to be the Vessel A1, uh, but there is a, um, it's, it's a great relationship from a streaming perspective in that you are able to provide a very easy to use music streaming solution to your customers. And then behind the scenes, you have that looped in the Crown Amplifier that's then driving uh, all of the uh, speakers and subs. So kind of give you an idea of uh, how we compare on some of those SKUs. I've, I've got a much more hardy version of the uh, product comparison that uh, we can share with you, but to kind of give you an idea of who we view some of our competitors in this space. Uh, and the AS2 is kind of a good, uh, you know, example. We've got the, we've got True Audio Sonance Origin Acoustics Monitor, KEF, Triad, Stamp, AV, and Dolly up at the top. If uh, we know they have a competitive product, we've listed it here with as much information as we've been able to gather. So 
Um, that's for the AS2. And then we have both the hardscape sub as well as the buried sub from an equivalent perspective here. Uh, you'll notice there are uh, price points that are kind of all over the place. Um, we win uh, on the on the uh, buried sub uh, per, uh, price point, but as far as overall acoustic performance on both the sub 10, the sub 12, as well as the hardscape subs, uh, we have a stronger acoustic uh, presentation. We sound better than a lot of our competitors do, uh, most of our competitors, and we come with a much, much more price aggressive um, the standpoint a lot of our products as well. Here's the sub 12 there for your comparison as well. I'm thinking our retail prices are actually a little bit off there based on what we're seeing with the Sonance version. But anyways, that's US retail. Again, that uh, uh, the retail prices down in New Zealand could be a little bit different. Uh, we've just got a handful of minutes left. So we're gonna uh, take the opportunity to jump into distributed audio. Uh, if uh, to kind of in your mind's eye view what distributed audio is essentially think speakers that are placed strategically throughout a residence to like, for example, like a kitchen, bathroom, living room, uh, dining room, or if you're doing commercial, you can think uh, hotel room, bathroom, um, you can do conference room, boardroom, executive offices, uh, retail space, you name it. And that kind of falls into the distributed audio category uh, if it's not 70 volt or 100 volt, which that is when you're able to now daisy chain the speakers together. I wanted to give you a couple applications here on, on the far left hand side. We have a pair of our ghost speakers that are, that are in a higher end residential uh, kitchen there. It's obviously a larger kitchen. They wanted to be able to have music there while, while they entertain their, uh, uh, their guests as well as when they eat dinner as a family. We have uh, in the upper right hand or upper, upper middle corner, excuse me, you'll see that that uh, is a, um, it's a hotel room actually. Um, that is uh, actually the next two pictures are. So that the one there in the upper right, upper middle is a hotel room and the one on the right is also a hotel room. Um, those are kind of a bathroom bedroom combination there. You'll see speakers in both the bathroom as well as the uh, bedroom there. And again, the uh, we work very closely with a lot of hospitality groups. Uh, if you ever make it to Vegas, uh, we're in a number of hotels down there. They absolutely love our uh, True Audio brand products. In the lower uh, middle uh, picture, that is a, actually a, a a uh, clubhouse that is, is in a large residential community. There are a number of speakers that are placed throughout uh, where, where their residents are able to come and mingle with other residents. The, uh, the Homeowners Association, also, also known as HOA, wanted to be able to provide music for their residents and just kind of be, provide a, an even more warm and welcoming listening experience in their, in their uh, community. We've got uh, the um, new Ghost series, which is actually a uh, very exciting product for us. We just barely started to launch these uh, at the end of last year, beginning of this year. Uh, these are absolutely fantastic from an installer's point of view because we've done a number of things to essentially shave off the time it takes to install speakers into your project. Uh, we have some wonderful YouTube videos you can check out on the True Audio YouTube channel. It kind of shows you a side-by-side-by-side -side -by -side -by -side comparison between uh, even just our own speakers and what Toolist now is bringing to the table. But essentially what you see in front of you is the new Ghost series right in the middle there. You have our Ghost Carbon, uh, which is a carbon fiber woofer with a titanium tweeter. It also has what's called a three-way, uh, where there's another smaller woofer kind of hiding behind that tweeter. The far right-hand corner is our polypropylene woofer finish, um, a little bit smaller woofer. And then we have a dual voice speaker there on the far left. That is essentially one speaker that can play your stereo signal. And uh, there's a number of different variations available in this family. This is just a couple of samples, but they're available in both a seven inch woofer and a nine inch woofer, uh, both the poly and the carbon in the dual voice. Um, and also all these speakers come with uh, our new patented uh, toolless technology. And kind of give you an idea of what that means. I'm gonna to jump to this next slide. Essentially, you'll notice that uh, we've removed any sort of screw holes off the sur uh, surface of the speaker. So uh, what I mean by that is, let me grab my annotation tool here. So here we are no longer uh, uh, have screwdrivers here. We have these four tabs that right now are currently closed. As you'll see the dog ears in this picture are actually out and uh, clamping on whatever we've installed them into. But when you first get the new Ghost series and you unbox it, all four of these will kind of be in an open position. And these dog ears will actually be tucked back here uh, in an open and armed position. Essentially you take this uh, a speaker and you put it up inside of the, the hole that you've either cut or in the event that you're using our pre-construction brackets you install during uh, rough-in, you can take the uh, speaker wire that comes off out of that rough-in ring and plug it in here to a new quick connect technology. 
or in the event that you haven't used our rough and ring, you can hook it up via leg this is kind of the, the uh, traditional way of doing it with speaker wire and our binding posts. You take the speaker using the tweeter bridge as a handle. It's, it's reinforced, designed to be used as a handle. You hold it up inside the hole, then you begin to close those dog ears. Uh, and as you do so, the, they're spring loaded, they pop out and, 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 and come down on whatever material you're installing them into. Then as you continue to close those levers, that mechanical teeth actually come in uh, and that's why we call our true grip. These teeth come in and actually mechanically engage the dog ear and bring that down so that it's essentially cinching on whatever material you're installing them in. A lot of our competitors have a toolless design, but they rely entirely on the tension of the spring to hold the speaker in place for the life of the speaker. Uh, if you're like me, you've had plenty of experience with springs, at least playing with them. And you'll notice that after time, those springs will get what they call spring fatigue. And essentially what that means, if you're relying on this to hold the weight of a speaker over years and years of time, that speaker will essentially eventually start to sag out of its, uh, uh, out of its hole. With our true grip technology, we essentially remove the, the spring tension away from uh, the spring. So now there's a mechanical closure there and the speakers will never come out of the hole until you're ready, at which point you open the, dot, the levers back up. There's a little hole there that you can essentially uh, can take a, a smaller screwdriver or a chopstick or a pencil and you push it up inside the hole, it resets the dog ear and the speaker then comes out of the hole in the event that you need to service it or in the, customer's up in, the, or in the event the customer's upgrading, so on and so forth. So we're absolutely thrilled that in the Go series, these are just now starting to ship. So uh, we're excited to have you start specifying these inside of your projects. Uh, from there, we're going to jump into our Phantom series. So the Go series uh, was one that we actually founded back in 2007. Uh, here we are in 2021, we're finally uh, giving it an upgrade, uh, kind of a facelift with all the, uh, all the technology that we just incorporated into. Uh, you can use this for not only multi-room or distributed audio, uh, but you can also use this in some uh, home cinema uh, or com conference room cinema type applications, which our free system design service will help you kind of walk through and get familiar with. Our Phantom series is kind of a step down from the Ghost series. So in every scenario, we're trying to give you at least a good and a better solution. Uh, obviously, Gross is the best. Phantom is just a, little, a minor step down. Uh, it has um, just uh, some slightly uh, inferior components, does not have tools in it yet, um, but it's still an absolutely phenomenal sounding speaker and one of our top movers because it's a great balance of both performance and price inside of, its, uh, inside of the category. Uh, you'll notice also inside of this, uh, the Phantom series, we're giving you a four inch speaker, a six and a half inch speaker, and an eight inch. Such that's the size of the woofer here. The larger that woofer, the better your bass response is going to be. And we're also burying the tweeter material. So our polypropylene has a soap dome tweeter. Titanium tweeter is found in the glass fiber woofer, which you can see is kind of this textured woofer here. And then finally, we have our dual voice option as well in the Phantom series, which is that speaker that supports stereo output. Uh, both the Ghost as well as the Phantom have optional square grills. Uh, you can actually take that and attach it uh, via magnets right to this first surface of the speaker. Even though it's a round speaker, it works great with our square grills. It's far easier to cut in a circle speaker and then line up a square grill in the event that you're trying to line it up with uh, things like modern light fixtures and so on. Um, here's just another kind of a, a sample of a competitive analysis here. Uh, the true audio uh, equivalent is the PP6 of this, of this particular competitive analysis. You'll see that uh, we have a lot of competitors in this space and most everyone is more expensive than us. Uh, but you'll see that our performance, especially if you have a chance to get them inside of your hands, we uh, outperform pretty much all of our competitors uh, in the Phantom series. Um, unfortunately, the Ghost series is so new, I do not have one of these put together just yet for that. But as soon as we can get that done, we'll get it out and share it with you. Here we're comparing the PP8 uh, to some of its competitors as well. You'll notice a lot of the same differences. Obviously, we've got stronger power than most of our competitors, and we have a much more aggressive price point than all of our competitors. Uh, just a couple minutes left. I'm going to uh, quickly touch on home cinema. We have a very healthy line in the home cinema category. Uh, we have a couple of different examples of installations here. The, uh, the right-hand picture and the bottom left-hand picture are um, uh, uh, example scenarios of in-room. Uh, uh, our in-room B23 tower speakers actually being used. And then the upper left-hand corner is our in-wall B23 speakers that are being used. 
essentially what makes up our home cinema line is we have our new Rev series, which is uh, uh, just barely launched at the beginning of this year. Uh, uh, these, this, unfortunately, the slide's incorrect. It's only a seven inch woofer. Um, that's uh, on it. Uh, it's actually inside of the speaker and it's on an angle. You'll notice at the bottom of the speaker, there's only a little bit of plastic bezel showing or baffle. And then towards the top, there's quite a bit more. Essentially what that does is allows you to install the speakers at the front of a listening area, like a, a residential theater or a conference room theater. And then you're able to project that down and out towards your seating area. These feature a lot of the same functionality and features that the new Ghost series has. Uh, you can use the tweeter bridge as a handle, it has a three-way uh, speaker, so you've got a woofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter. Also has our new True Grip and Quick, quick Connect technology, essentially shaving minutes off of your installation time, uh, allowing for you to have uh, it, get uh, more installations done faster, which it turns into obviously revenue for your company. Uh, we have a full line of subwoofers available in the True Audio product set, uh, both in wall, in room, in ceiling subs, as well as bandpass subs, which is a, kind of this portable tube looking thing. Um, they all have a um, wonderful bass response, but have, uh, phenomenal price points in its competitive uh, environment. So in the event you need a subwoofer in your project, please look at uh, the True Audio offering. Um, to kind of keep rounding out our uh, home theater, we, obviously the Rev series is here. We also have in-wall, what are called our GHT series, uh, that you can use in a home theater application or a, you know, a commercial theater like a, a conference room or a boardroom. Um, I'm going to skip past that. Uh, the B23 series is the in-wall series I mentioned earlier. Um, that's available through True Audio as well. It's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, obviously, very mean-looking speakers designed to go in and, and be more of our premium list uh, for more of our premium cinema installations. Um, this is actually a series that's just about ready to get a facelift in itself. Uh, coming about September, this will be renamed the Elite series, and you'll see uh, a little bit smaller form factor as well as some other things done on an acoustic standpoint, as well as our new tools design. Um, finally, I wanted to wrap up with commercial, uh, knowing that we have uh, plenty of opportunities for commercial projects down in New Zealand. Uh, here's just another application. This is that same pro, uh, clubhouse uh, for residents. You can see it's more of a modern industrial uh, design. Um, you can here you'll notice these two, they almost look like lights, but they're actually what we call our beat drop speakers are hanging from the ceiling. They're bringing audio down the inside of the project. Uh, we have a full line of commercial products or products. We have our in-ceiling speakers, uh, both with a bezel and without a bezel. That's one thing I didn't mention. Let's see if this actually shows this. I don't think it shows our grill. It doesn't. Essentially, with all the True Audio products now, we are, we've gone to what we call our ghost style grill. Essentially, the thick plastic bezel that uh, so many customers are familiar with, we have done away with. So essentially, when you look up at one of our speakers, it you know, is entirely uh, speaker mesh. And there's no hard transition from, you know, ceiling material to plastic bezel to speaker mesh. So uh, we have that available in our uh, in-ceiling models. And then we have our beat drops, which you'll see here in the middle, uh, these more pennant style speakers. And then we have some drop ceiling products as well. And then we have some surface mount products as well for think outdoor patios. You know, if you have a, uh, if you're at, next time you're at an outdoor or a Starbucks with an outdoor dining area, if you look up at the speakers that are up against the wall, this is where this, this speaker would then come in and be used. Um, all of the commercial products and the landscape products are all 70 volt, 100 volt, meaning you can essentially daisy chain those speakers together. And then finally, we have a competitive analysis, uh, both with the beat drops here at the top, uh, with the Sonance versions, the Origin versions, and then the Triad Snap versions. Uh, JBL also has a, a version of the um, beat drop that is not included here, as well as a CL70 V6 UL. Essentially, anybody that gives us a chance to go head to head with any of our competitors in the commercial space, whether it's any of these companies here or JBL, we come out uh, stronger from a price perspective as well as an acoustic per, uh, perspective. So hopefully you can kind of see a theme there that we try and make sure we're coming to the table with some of the best products for your for you and your customers. And we have just a, an example of an application here. We have our beat drop speakers that are in uh, what's called the trampoline park in down in, uh, I believe this is down in Georgia, where we have a big warehouse customer actually uh, stuck a bunch of trampolines in and turned into a trampoline park. I think maybe this is a thing in New Zealand too, but essentially he wanted two different zones and he wanted to really have it rock. So we tricked it out with a bunch of beat drops and uh, some of our landscape subs actually, we tucked the landscape subs up inside of the ceiling and there's two different zones here. So on the left side, we have a number of uh, trampolines and a different zone that we're covering and over on the right, kind of that white background is a, a separate zone. 
All these are being uh, daisy chained together with a crown amplifier. And then we're using Vessel A1s, two of them actually, to provide a music streaming source into both of these zones. Okay, I think that puts us right at the hour mark or just a little over the hour mark. I know we waited for a few minutes there, um, but that is essentially it. I just wanted to uh, go ahead and open it up, see if there's any other last minute uh, questions that I can answer. Um, if not, obviously, we'd be happy to share this presentation out with you. You can follow up with any questions after the fact via email. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask, ask any questions. Otherwise, um, yeah, Dallin, uh, Dale, or Simon, if you guys have anything, please don't hesitate to uh, say anything. Yeah, hey, Chase, uh, Liam from uh, Goal Wireless here. Liam? Yeah, how are you? Good. Good. Yeah, good. good. So I, I'm just wondering about uh, interoperability with uh, Alexa with the uh, A-series. Yeah. So currently, so um, they do work with the Alexa at the moment, is that right or, or not? It, uh, so the Vessel A1, A3, and A6 do not work with Alexa yet, but the we are literally about 90 days away from an official launch. Uh, so, okay. then so, that, so, so they don't they won't use the Chromecast built in or anything to. Oh, they will. So yeah. when when the X series launches, everything that the current Vessel series does will be rolled forward into the new version, and then we'll also be adding Alexa. So Chromecast will continue to work, Apple AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect, as well as Alexa Cast will all work. Yeah, cool. All right. It's a great question. Well, uh, if that's not it, we'll go ahead and wrap. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for your time and joining us today. Uh, if you're here live with us, uh, if you're joining us after the fact via recorded version, thank you for taking the time to listen. Uh, please don't hesitate to follow up with the uh, Go wireless team with any questions that you guys have or obviously you're welcome to reach out to our team as well we help facilitate any system designs or any product questions you have i uh, would love to be your partner as you can uh, take us to market or bring us to market with your uh, with your end users so 